Hello, welcome to the Colorful Creativity Podcast. My name is Caroline and this is episode 71. Binks is also here. He didn't want to miss out on the introductions. So uh, yeah, let me dive in with the have to part first. Um, you can find me online everywhere as Kralaline, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, The Works, Ravelry, everywhere, I think. Um, I have an Etsy shop, kralaline.etsy.com, and there is a Ravelry group on Ravelry for the podcast and my yarn and everything else, which is the Colorful Creativity group, which you can find in the group section on Ravelry, of course. So, um, I noticed that there were quite a few new subscribers, so I think it's time to reintroduce myself. Also, you've been missing me for quite a long time. Um, it's been busy, I've not been well, and we've been on vacation. So, I think that the whole missing weeks will be explained later, during the whole episode. Um, I am Caroline. I live in the Netherlands, very close to the German border. Uh, Enschede is what it's called in the Netherlands. On the other side, there's Germany with Gronau, Westfalen, um, so Westphalia, I think. I live here with my husband and two cats, Binks, which you saw his tail. He's already gone snooping around. And Laia, which is his sister. I can grab her for a sec. She's she's usually a bit camera shy, so and she was next to me on the heater. That's where she loves to lie. As you can see, Missy here is a Cornish Rex, and that means they don't have a lot of fur. Uh, they are only got a little bit of fluff. And um, that means they are cold, so they love lying on the heater. And since that thing is on next to me because it's freezing in the Netherlands, she, she, they are enjoying the shizzle out of it. I'm actually a little bit warm next to it, so got my hand knit socks on. That helps. Well, what else is there to say? Um, I'm an indie dyer, I'm a glass bead maker, I am a newbie on pattern designing for knitwear, um, creative artist is probably the best description, or creative mess, just how you want to call it. I love to knit, spin, I have done quite some crochet, but since I learned to knit I just ignored crochet and went with knitting, a um, bit more of a challenge, so I kind of was bored with crochet and I haven't picked it up yet. I have quite some ideas to crochet, but I just don't feel it. I like knitting better. I like the look of knitting better. Not sure why, how, whatever's, uh, spinning, knitting, dyeing, bead making, it all keeps me busy enough, so I don't really miss the crochet. Uh, drinking some tea. I'm not really big on coffee, just uh, decaf coffee, iced coffee and uh, decaf lattes are my go-to. Oat milk latte. I'm the fancy hippie kind of drink stuff. Um, well, this is a knitting podcast so I guess I will just dive in with everything that happened. I finished cast on, etc. in the past month. Because that is how long it was. I think it might have been actually longer, but I don't remember. I think it, it's about six weeks, I think. But, well, I actually made notes, lots of them. So let's say, see how far we're gonna get. I have to say, this is going to be a knit tea retreat recap episode and everything else that came in will be in the next episode. Otherwise I can sit here chat with you guys for probably over two hours because it's a lot. Oh my god, so much has happened. All, most all was good. <laughs> so let's start with finished objects. Okay, first finished object. 
Sorry, you have to imagine that there is a pair of mittens on my hands. I will show you my brand new hand model now. My grandma. Um, we went here last week. I had my fingerless mittens on, my lateral quadrants by Paper Daisy Creations, which I test knitted for her. I made one mitten as a test knit and then I was like, actually, they're quite nice and I need a second one, so I have a pair and I can just wear them instead of just having it as a sample. So I made the second one, finished it, had it in a, a few different knit alongs, like the counter, the point counterpoint for knit along. That was a collection of the whole uh, pattern. Uh, yeah, the pattern was part of that collection. Jeez, my words are. It's like starting all anew with not podcasting in that long time. Uh, so, excuse me for the rambly uh, thingy majigs everywhere. Um, yeah, you gotta sit through it. It's gonna be worth it. In the end, there will be a compilation of the knit to retreat, my trip to Cardiff, and uh, well, lots of things we did there. I will explain that in subtitles, etc. Um, so yeah, those mittens, I had them on because it was cold in the Netherlands. It's autumn, finally. Um, my grandma saw them, she was like, oh, they're so beautiful. I thought, wanna try them on? Yeah, and you knit so difficult stuff. It's color work, it's not difficult. For her, everything other than plain is difficult. But people, she has knit cardigans with lots and lots of intricate cables, all out of her head, no pattern, anything. I'm like, Gran, you were exactly the same as I am. And you're saying that I'm doing the difficult stuff. Well, I think she was doing that. Look who's here, Pink's her. Um, yeah. She put them on, she was like, oh, they're so nice and warm and my hands are always so cold. Even sitting next to the heater, she's really cold. She lost quite some weight. Like, she's really shrinking, getting old, and smaller and smaller and smaller. So, I was like, Grant, if you like them so much, please keep them, enjoy them. I hope you can enjoy them for a really long time. And, uh, well, that was it. No mints for me. So, I'm having really cold hands. I'm actually considering getting my coldest fuck mittens out very, very soon. But I didn't have to bike. So um, I'm knitting two pairs of new fingerless color work mittens. One pair for me, one pair for Robert, because he was complaining at the same time that his single thread, uh, just plain knitted fingerless mittens were too cold. So yeah, well, you will see that cast on because of course I'm knitting his first and then Finished object number one. My grand does make a really good hand model though, as you have seen. Um, finished object number two. These are the impossible girl socks. I put one on a blocker to show it to you. And this was actually also a sample for markets. I think I had one at Das Bunte Schaaf and then I was like, could I knit a second one? And I did. So I have a new pair of socks. This is knit in colorful soft sock, so my own hand dyed yarn. And uh, the colorway is called Quirky Rainbow. It has rainbow in there, just very lightly speckled. Actually not really me, but I really love it. I'm more of the more is more and less is more kind of, but this is really nice. I think I really would like a cardigan in this. I think it would be really awesome. We'll go with everything with all those colors in there. Um, the pattern designer, I have to uh, <clears throat> let you know in the description, you probably already saw it, I forgot. I knit these on two and a half millimeter high high sharps, my go-to, especially with this base. I love it, it's really nice fabric. Um, I like it when my socks are a bit 
tight and stiff. Um, just because that means if I walk, I don't feel all the threads, the single stitches, etc. That's one. Then, if Mr. Bingser would let go, thank you. Yeah, he's still with me. He's just sitting on my lap. I have finished another pair of socks. And I'm actually pretty sure you haven't seen it in any phase yet, just on Instagram, if you follow me there. Um, these are my scrappy socks. And I knit these for the monster sock knit along. And also for the Fall in Love knit along, hosted by Hebsblad Regina. And also by, oh god, her Instagram name is Annabelle Bumps, I think. Uh, but I will look it up. Like I said, I will put a lot of things in the information down here. So sorry that I'm making you look at the screen. Um, this is one of them. I used actually the same yarn in both socks made sure to make the cuff and toe matching um, but I mixed up the order in which I use them so lots of different ones no clue what they all were I know there is some drops of fable some knit picks whatever um, let me see this one is Boutinette yeah, and the rest, I'm not sure. Gebe Wolle probably. I used uh, those little cute mini balls by Regia, my first Regia, in this lilac for cuff and toe. And I actually did a double cuff. It's a pico cuff, and you just fold it over so the inside is pretty too. And what's really good is that you can just put in your end there and it's gone. <laughs> you know me and my ends. And I can show the inside actually of this sock. Both socks. But this one's easier. Look, look, look. All the ends are gone. I knit them right away. Like, you can probably see that. They're gone immediately. I knit the first stitches of a new yarn double, so that's like 6 to 10 stitches. And then uh, I also take the old yarn with me, and it's like catching your floats in color work. I'm knitting, uh, I'm not knitting continental. Um, is that English? We say it's German, so boom, sorry. But I know Germans are continental knitters as well. So it's it's pretty weird. Uh, I have no clue what it's called. I'm a thrower. Let's just say it like that. And if I have... That was Bing's throwing my notes on the ground. As if it wasn't enough that I did it. So. Put it there. Hopefully that works. Um, yeah. I was saying um, the end of the previous color I take with me like floats and I go like up, under, up, under. So I catch it, then I knit a stitch, I catch it, I knit a stitch. And then I do for almost half a round, probably 10 to 15 stitches. So no ends to weave in except for the Kitchener and the cast on, which is like perfectly fine with me, but like I think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen segments would be like thirty-six ends per sock. Seventy-two ends to weave in, people. No, not gonna happen with me. Then I would just leave them in and felt them as wearing them. So yeah, it was a good thing I did that immediately. Um, where are they? they oh, geez. I'm not really tactful today. As I notice now. That was almost my window. 
Let me take a sip of tea and show you my beautiful new mug with lipstick stains. It's Kedith. Yes, I learned that in Cardiff. It's the Welsh pronunciation of Cardiff. And yes, we started a collection now. I have this one brought with me from Cardiff after the Nitti retreat. There's another one. Um, we'll talk about that later. And also we brought Amsterdam, which I've been like lots of times already, but never got the mug and was like, yeah. But now we started a collection. I was like, okay, we're gonna get it at Schiphol and uh, just pick it up at the airport and go home. <laughs> like we were in Amsterdam. So yeah. Now we're gonna social engineer some extra mugs from places we've already been. London is probably already arranged. So now I only have to get Dublin, Ireland, Berlin, and I have to see what Germany else has. I think maybe Cologne, Dusseldorf. I don't think Münster or Dortmund would have one. Um, so I just have to do my research. I don't, I haven't found a good website where there's an overview of all the mugs there are. So I think Ireland only has Ireland and Dublin. And even those I haven't found in this new way. I only found the old ones, so. And um, yeah, well, London should be then coming my way. And uh, maybe one of Denmark that I should social engineer. But I have to see. Spain would also be one. I've been to Barcelona to the airport only. But well, we'll see. We'll see what we can manage. Maybe some places we have to go again to get it ourselves. Because it's so nice. Um, I have another two finished objects. And they look a bit weird probably on the sock blockers. Because the blockers aren't fitting. Maybe you remember this one. <laughs> I, uh, this is my Rainbow Bridges uh, sock. I made this quite a while ago and I only had to put in the heel and then I had a sample. This one sold as hot buns on Das Bund Schaaf and I might have even showed it to you already. I'm not even sure about it. But, so, now I have a pattern. Rainbow Bridges pattern by me. On Ravelry for sale that's what I've been up to <laughs> and well the pattern designing writing knitting it etc was kind of more important than making a podcast so it was all last-minute work because of course I wanted to have a knit tea retreat colorway as well and it works with the rainbow bridges pattern and also very well um, the pattern comes in different versions. I actually have more samples um, because I was like, yeah, this is just one base and I have to try it on another base. So this is a ho, ho, ho. This is colorful sock. And these two are colorful smooth sock. Um, the pattern comes in two different ways. Toe up with contrasting uh, toe, heel and cuff afterthought heel and we're also in cuff down with an eye of partridge heel so both versions are in one pattern you can just pick what you want and this one has no extra uh, yarn necessary just the one skein you already have of no rainbows without rain but this was just to show that you can also use something else than no rainbows without rain and it will also look very very pretty. I think every yarn that has a small repeat so you have the whole skein in front of you and you can just distinctly see that one part is the same and really visible and it will probably pull as a crazy maniac in your uh, sock like this I mean that's crazy pooling and this is just awesome pooling 
um, then it will work for the pattern. So, like I said, the pattern is now on Ravelry. Bit of self-promotion and I'm really, really warm now. So I'm gonna lose my cardigan. I'm very lucky to have short sleeves today. Um, so yeah, this is also finished. And I managed to make some really, really nice cards, which I forgot to take out to show you. So I'm gonna do that now. So here I am again. Um, this is the card I designed so I could sell my pattern at the market of the Knit Tea Retreat. I was like, how am I gonna do that? Like tell people that it's on Ravelry. And then my friend Petra told me, that she had seen others do it and it was like she, it's a postcard and you can just put a coupon code on there if people buy it but people can also take it to just go to Ravelry so this is the front both socks this is the toe up one this is the cuff down one and on the back side you have all the info like the yarn you need and like the standard info that's also on Ravelry and on the front page of the pattern a little introduction, how to reach out to me, the QR code to scan and go immediately to my designs page. Uh, that was actually Robert's idea. Nifty little feature that he added last minute. I was really happy with that. And here's the space where I can put a coupon code just to make it easy for downloads. And um, if I sold them in person that people could get a free download. I'm very, very happy. And I was so proud to see this in person. It's like so weird. Um, usually when I design things, I'm like, oh, it looks like anyone can make it and so amateuristic, etc. And then I had these cards in my hand. I was like, now I feel like a professional. <laughs> I don't know. It's like you level up on something. or, And uh, I'm not one to really celebrate my successes and with this one I actually took it in and I was like yeah I did something I actually managed to do this in 24 hours so it was like brainwave on Thursday make the design have a proof of concept in my hands already on Friday because I went to a local printer it's like 600 meters from us and they're really, really nice and they were so quick. And on Tuesday, I picked up 250 cards. So these are going out with all orders. And uh, yeah, just to show you that I have a pattern out now. Then I guess it's time to dive into this whip mountain because it's horrible. After all the sample knitting I did, I was like, I want to do stuff that I want to knit. And I cast on everything. And then I had some more samples to do because of the design. <laughs> I was like, oh God, what have I done to myself? So, um, well, in this project bag, I got as a gift from my friend Dorit. You can follow her as Kralorium. I don't think she really has an Etsy shop, but I've been trying to encourage her to do so. But she's also a mom of two kids and pretty busy. And she's really nice and uh, sent me that bag as a gift. Um, in here, undercover otter needle nest. That wasn't what I was opening. No rainbows without rain. With another sample sock, because I have a new skein length for my yarn, which also means that the pooling is different than this one. So the pooling, it's actually the same base, but it's a different dye bath. That's why this one's more dark and this one more light. And this one is pooling differently because of the skein length. I really like how it pools. But I also really like this one, so I'm not sure. Do you have any opinions on what you like better? Please tell me in the Ravelry group or in the comments here on YouTube or just message me somewhere. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm at the heel flap at the moment. I love how that heel flap looks. 
it's just those little blips of color that you have slip stitch off. Um, the only problem is I quit and I didn't write down where I was. But if I see it correctly, I'm on a pearl row so I can find out where I am. Looks like I'm on the, I just did the first row of four. I hate that. I have to knit a heel flap in one go or not. That's why my knitting most of the times gets stuck at the heel and I just put it away until I have enough time to hit a whole flap or a whole heel. Yeah, with this one that didn't work out because I took it as a travel project. <laughs> Silly me. Oh well, I think I know where I am now. So, I'm knitting these on high eye sharps, 2.5 millimeter, just like I always do. And these socks will be a mismatched pair. Like, same base, same colorway, just totally looking different. And I'm actually looking forward to wearing them. Don't know about you, I sometimes I just like to go against the rules of being a decent adult or something. I'm just not really up to adulting every day and I'm like, no, I'm channeling my inner Pippi Longstocking. It's just a lot more fun that way. Then, in a colorful creativity boxy bag, damn, it's been a long time since I made those. <sighs> Talking about long stockings. Well, this is a sock for my husband. Uh, that's the front of the thing so uh, or is that the back oh god i don't remember and i have to put in an afterthought heel somewhere that's gonna be fun i don't think it will really, really really matter but sock one has been finished for ages and sock two has grown a lot i knit on this during traveling airplane uh, Easy knitting needed on knit nights at the knit tea retreat. It's like my brain doesn't do anything like heel flaps. I took this one out and I was just easy, easy knitting. Yeah, I already moved the marker because I forget easily. And I am knitting these on high, high, sharp 2.75 millimeter. And I have this really nifty needle keeper from Knitting I Love. You can see it down there, I hope. And she has really, really nice things uh, like these needle keepers. Uh, you could also put pens or anything in there. Uh, I, I put them in like this. And then I make a looping if my needle works with me. Put in the looping. And then I close it like that. And you could actually put in a pen so you can make notes if you use a pattern. I'm not using a pattern with this one, this is just simple. Toe up, X amount of stitches, I'm not even sure. I think it's just 64 because it's on a 2.75 millimeter needle. Um, yarn I'm using is Patton's Cry. Uh, some gray brown marl colorway name and also some red contrasting color from Patton Scroy for the toe and later on for the heel. Pretty boring. That's why this one is absolutely not going fast. Um, about knitting I love um, there are some other really nifty thingies she has. Um, I will show them to you next time. And that's also when I want to do a giveaway for the reaching the 600 subscribers um, because I haven't prepared for that. And the other stuff is in the stuff I want to show you next time because this episode is already going way longer than normal. I think I'll probably be rambling here for an hour and a half if I don't hurry up. In my Chatty Cats creations, the department of making socks bag is another sock project. Check. Of course. What else would there be in here? 
this is one of the projects I cast on because I was like, I am, well, not sick of my own yarn, but I have a huge stash. Um, probably a stable. My husband knows. <laughs> I told him already, actually. Um, and yeah, what to say about that. I want to knit with it. I have so many awesome yarns that I'm like, I want to knit with those. So I cast this project on. This is with this one and that one. And it is, yeah, throw it on the ground. Undercover other yarn, squirm sock, uh, squirm base, sock yarn. It's the same as my soft sock yarn, so that's really nice to combine stuff. And the colorway is called Wicked Little Things. Hold it in front of my face, maybe that helps. It started raining here, so the lights have gone awful. Wicked Little Things. And the mini is actually an advent calendar one. And it has this cute little mini label. And it's called Slumber Party. Yes, there you can see it. And I thought it would look really like this. So I cast up, this is a toe up sock. This is the Tulsi sock by Verena Kors. In black and white, it doesn't really show well, but it's a really nice pattern, as you can see. I was really intrigued about how this would be knit. Now I know, and it's fun. It's really fun to knit. Um, I won this pattern in a Geektastic Fibers knit along. So it's actually, I won it like two months ago and I already cast it on a month, within a month. I think it was within two weeks after winning it and getting it. Um, I did the heel yesterday. It's a German short row heel. I'm going to frog it. There's like huge holes here. I really hate that. And I'm probably going to knit a few rounds extra on the foot because I tried it on and it was way too tight. So I don't know where it went wrong. Measuring or my gauge might be a little bit different and I didn't get the exact length that the pattern suggests. We'll see, yeah, it has to be fixed. I want to wear these socks because they are soft sock and they are so, so nice and soft. I love this base for socks. So sturdy and so well, I love it. Just can't get enough of it. Uh, like, it's the same as this one. And I think I now have three or four pairs of, I think four pairs of uh, this base sock instead of just the sturdy sock yarn, the virgin wool uh, stuff. And I always take these socks out first. This base are just, is just amazing. I love it. Knitting 2.5 millimeter high high sharps. Not sure if I said that already or if it was still necessary. Then we're getting to another travel project in a little gray girl cat bag. And this is actually really good uh, for traveling because it's pretty small. Let me get the right. Yeah, I think this one will work. Um, this is, in here is a Viajante. So, um, Portuguese for Traveler by Martina Beam, which looks like this. It's like a poncho, shawl, cape, thingy majig. I can show you how it works. Uh, you start here with a garter stitch triangle, then you close it in a round. It's going for a stockinette length uh, widening thing, and then there's a mesh border. I'm folding this back in three so I can fit it back in here. And here it is. 
<laughs> this is really, really small. And it's actually still on bamboo needles. Um, I took this in the airplane. I was like, I wanna see if, if they steal my metal needles, I still have a backup project on bamboo needles. Well, high iron sharps in an airplane, no problem. I was really, really happy because I was able to knit a lot in the airplane. This base is called Jacuzzi by Kremke Solwol. I left the tags at home. They're probably somewhere in my cart. Uh, the colorway is called Kirsche or like cherry, I believe. It's really pretty red and I want to make myself a little red riding hood cape thingy-majig with it. So here's my progress and this is going slow because it's quite some stitches and knitting with bamboo is not my favorite. I might change back to metal but because of the silk, it's it's yuck with silk, probably my bamboo needles are better. So here's the garter. You can see it's a triangle. This is the middle in the point. Then this is really narrow still. It looks quite weird, I know. I got a small cable in it. I think it's 60 centimeters. So I can't put it over my head to try it on, but I have tried it on a longer cable and I was like, yeah, I think this will fit my head. So now it's just simple stocking it in around for like a million miles to go. No clue when I will finish this one. When I will take this one wherever I go, not sure. But at least it's on my needles. It was one of my make nine times three ideas to make for this year. I, I kind of cast on a few of the ones I really, really wanted to knit. Ambulance. Another colorful creativity bag, which I actually made for my husband because he started to knit and he was like, yeah, I want to try it. And I was like, oh, I'm going to make you a Star Wars bag. Now it's mine because after a few rounds he was like, no, this is not for me. One of my other things I really, 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 really wanted to cast on. My Wonder Woman wrap pattern is by Carissa Knits, Carissa Browning. And ta -da, da da I have it on the needles. <laughs> this is all I did. And then it was like, oh, I want to knit that sample, and I want to do that one, and I'm going to cast on this one. Oh, and I want to do that one, and I want to do that, that knit along. So this is one of the projects that has been cast on and put in the corner. I am using Handmaiden Kashba. This is Amber. I'm really happy with this yarn. It is a 80% merino, 10% nylon and 10% cashmere. And this one is vermilion. Not sure if you can see it. But if I go any further, I'll rip my stitches off the needle. So. I hope now it's getting a bit more quiet and settling back into normal routine that I can have a little bit extra time knitting, especially now that it's winter time and change the clocks and it's like time to knit in the evening, put on candles, put on light, not go out, not do anything else and just relax. So. This one was in my acquisitions last time. My Fiber Rachel Flower Power Fund cat bag, cat ears bag. And in here I have something really nice. Um, this is going to be a pair of mittens for Robert, my husband. Uh, these are called the Fighting Mittens by What's So Luck Designs. 
and well you can call them fighting mid mittens i just call them bam pow mittens because that's what they are like bam pow robert really really liked that idea so i started knitting it for him in a craftless needle cozy get off get off so i already have the start You're going to see a B coming out here because this is the BAM, I think. I will put it on for you. Let me rearrange this. I'm knitting this on 3.25 millimeter higher, higher, sharp interchangeables because that's easier when you have to change needles for the cuff size. Uh, the, 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 the cuff. Um, so, here you go. They're actually quite short, but I'm gonna lengthen the cuff uh, on this side so he has nice warm hands instead of very cold fingers still. He found these colors himself. He was actually looking over my shoulder when I was looking at all the color options because this pattern has been knit like 1200 times already. I was like, hmm, what do we like? He saw one with orange and teal. He was like, I want that one. I was like, what? Who are you and what have you done with my husband? Uh, wanting some crazy color combination that I like, that I would even wear. So, here we go. This is what I had in my leftover from the sample socks I did. Colorful soft sock, because of course, nice and soft hands. I have looked at Jameson 2-ply. I was like, nah, it's scratchy. I don't feel like knitting with it yet. Hello, miss. Um, colorway, hey there. I had some leftovers from Sock Madness. And this colorway is called Goldstorm. After some beautiful flowers. Um, yeah. I really like it. He wanted orange, but the orange I had was pumpkin season and pumpkin season has like a part orange and a part speckled on uh, a lighter base color. And I was like, I don't think that looks nice with the Bampow. I think you want two semi-solids. So I was like, okay, then I will take that one. He's not the hardest person to knit for. He will gladly take anything. He's actually gonna get some neon yellow with pink and black socks. The dragon fruit uh, colorway. Because I have knit one sample sock and it's too big for me. So it's like, does it fit you? So he said yes. He tried it on, of course. He was like, yeah. So I can knit a second speckled space sock for him. Someday. Someday. Not now. He's got other things he needs. He needs a new hat. Nice and thick and warm. Then, in my Stephen and Penelope, Penelope project bag, I have cast on a sweater. Yes, I have finally decided what I wanted to knit. I really want to knit. I have to rearrange things or I lose my stitches. Didn't put anything on the needle on this one. Um, I actually have multiple sweaters I want to cast on and I think I should make 2019 the year of sweater because I want to knit a million sweaters and cardigans and things. But I always keep falling back into the small stuff. So what do we have here? The Breeding Space Sweater by Vera Palimaki. That was postman or woman, poor one in the rain. Um, yeah, I've been meaning to cast this on for quite a while. I was like, yeah, well, and I had the yarn actually in this shape. I have to frog it because, well, to be honest, this is more like a mini thing that really only comes to here and actually just drops down. 
and I'm not the kind of girl who wears it like this, like my gran would, with some nice thingy here. I'm like, no, I'm not that old, and that's really not the way I want to wear it. So my ladybug shawl that I knit, it was my first lace knit. Well, yeah, my first steps in lace knitting. And then I mean the technique, not the yarn. Is going to be frogged and re-knit into a sweater. And then you want to see the yarn probably. It is Tosh Merino Light. I had it for ages in the Stephen Loves Tosh colorway, which is a Stephen and Penelope special. I've got three skeins of that and I've got two skeins of nutmeg which I snagged from a tea stash and I think this will look amazing together. I'm actually now at the first stripe section so I'm very very excited to start. I finished this last night uh, that I could start with the stripes with the first stitch now oh the size of needles oh dear what is it three and a half millimeter higher higher sharps interchangeables as well because you also change between uh, ribbing and stuff uh, for your needle size and i like it better that way i cramped them on a small cable i think it is 60 or 80 centimeters because i was like i like it better if it goes around smooth and I will put a cable connector in once I can try it on. So now I have to do a few stripes. It's one, two, one, two, twenty, 21 times. One, two, three, four. That's the stripe section. Three more times. Yeah. I'll be busy for quite a while until I can finally uh, split up for the arms. Separate the arms. That's what I meant. And then I can try it on. Mm. We'll be excited. And then that was Whip Mountain. So, on to next stuff. Let me check. Did I have it all? Looks like I had it all. So now we're at the fun stuff for the knit tea retreat. Um, I'm first going to show you a new acquisition, my Fluffenta bag from Yarnistry. And on my Bampow mittens, which project bag did I put those in? I think it was this one. There was already the stitch marker that came with it. It says yarn street. You can just believe me that it says so. Um, that was also with this. Uh, it was on the zipper as a zipper pull. And I was like, I now need a stitch marker. And I couldn't reach my own. So I was like, oh, I will get that one. So my Floof Hunter bag with neon orange leather handle. And also some really cool stickers in here. The sniffer and the squisher and it's just so ingenious. You did a really great job there. In here I was hiding my, oh dear. You hear me? Let's hope that takes. Well, <laughs> sorry, admiring my steak. I had a little swatch that was like, kind of like this in the round. And I sticked it at a class at the Knit Tea Retreat. The class was given by Anakin Ellis. And um, well, yeah, it, it was scary to cut your knitting in half. Um, but it was also fun. I learned a lot. I'm showing you the back side here, and this is what I was looking at. I was like, oh no, it looks like it's unraveling, but I probably just had, have to sew a ribbon on it, and then it's 
it's good and it's done and it won't do anything. Um, but there you can see how ugly it looks when you cut it. And on this side, you can see how pretty you can make it. It's just all gone in this little package of knitting. Um, but this is probably more like I'm going to do it because this is a pretty button band. And then just sew a ribbon on it. Um, I crocheted the sides. Uh, I used my colorful soft sock, which is a superwash yarn, which is nice and rounded and doesn't catch on each other and has a pretty stitch definition. So it was pretty scary to see if this would hold with a crochet edge. Yeah, probably it does. I might just sew over it if I have to do it again at home with a real sweater. There may be like a million extra swatches for this before I can cut a real sweater. I'm I'm just a pretty scary scared person for sticking still. But now I know the technique, I know the theory behind it, I know the basics. I'm like, okay, I might be able to do this. Um, in the end of this episode, there will be a recap of the Nitty Retreat, like photos, um, a video of me sticking and looking like afterwards. Oh my God, I don't need. Um, very, very grateful for helping me out there by videoing it. Thank you very much, Ainge of Yarning Yarns, uh, the local yarn shop for Cardiff. Um, yeah. It was so much fun together. Um, I'm gonna put it all in the, in the end because that's easier for me to make like a nice video of it. Um, I had a lovely time at the Knit Tea Retreat. It was amazing. Um, the other technique I learned there was double knitting. Yes, this is something like a mini TARDIS. Um, my swatch was really, really tiny because I used fingering weight and I knit very tight. Others had like huge things because they were doing DK and bigger needles. But mine is nice and, and tiny. This kind of fried my brain. It was like, what? How? It works. It works. I understand that it works, but still, my mind was blown. It was like, I double knit a thing. I have no clue if I'm going to use this technique. I have an idea for it. Um, Robert wants a polar chulo, which is a color work hat, but it has been altered by someone for a penguin motif instead of a polar bear. And Robert lost penguin, so I was like, I'm gonna do that one. And then I read her explanation and she was like, I did it in double knitting instead of in color work because my gauge was better. I'm like, okay. I can double knit now, so I can try it. We're gonna see if I can knit, double knit a hat. Very curious. Um, oh, uh, that uh, workshop was taught by Renee Callahan of East London Knits, and it was a pleasure, that workshop. If you get the chance to do one of her classes, do it. It was amazing. Uh, we had such a lovely time together and um, some of my friends I met at the Geeky Puffin Knit Palooza two years ago were also in this knit to retreat and it was so nice to see them again as well and oh god and now there is like a million things I have to show you from the retreat. Let's start with the goodie bag. Jenny and Zoe. Uh, Jenny is all about yarn. Um, also an indie dyer and a bag maker and awesomeness uh, maker. Also podcast. Um, and like now, knit treat event organizer. Um, and Zoe is Pins and Needles UK. She makes wonderful patterns and also helps out Jenny a lot with uh, going on shows. So they like the dynamic duo of uh, knitting retreat events, planning thingies. Well, look at this. They even got their own fabric. 
for project bags. They sold like 60 project bags for the retreat. It's like amazing. Really, really cool. And well, I signed up for the retreat, I think over a year ago. So I understand that you need so much time to organize this. It all coming together is like super amazing. So bag. Mug, like the knit tea retreat. So you had to have a mug to drink your tea from. Um, they told us to bring our own water bottle and a thermos or coffee mug or something. I didn't have one, so I went to Starbucks on Friday, bought myself a thermos mug because I really, really wanted a new one. Robert took mine a few times and well, when you then want coffee or tea, you don't have one and you have to pay extra and I'm like, yeah, I want my own. We both have one now. But that one was really, really awesome. Then, in there, Ace came of Happy Owl Decay by Owl, Owl, Owl About Yarn. Jeez. Um, it is the Knit Tea Retreat Cardiff 2018 Special Colorway. It's pretty in purple, matchy matchy with everything else. Um, so hand dyed by Jenny. Really, really like it. I'm not a DK fan, but I'm pretty sure I can find something. Um, maybe I can even gift it to my mom because I think it's her colors more. Maybe my mother-in-law with her purple. Not sure, we'll see. I could just keep it myself, just as a keepsake. Then there is this mini skein by Down Sheepy Lane, who was also an attendee at a retreat and a vendor at the marketplace. In the bag was a beautiful set of stitch markers, tea retreat, tea related, like a muffin, a spoon, a cup, and. Oh yeah, there it is, a teapot. It's a bit difficult to see. Um, then, there was more in there, but I already sifted through a bit. I left some in the UK because of weight limits on <laughs> suitcases. Oh God, don't even get me started. There is a beautiful Rapture Yukalan, it's jasmine scented mini by Yarn and Yarns, Angela. Um, then, well, yours truly put a water kettle in it. Didn't had to take it with me in the airplane. I was like, I should have sent it ahead because it was like kind of heavy to have 60 of those with me, but that's fine. Then there is Ruth Crafts, a pattern I can download. There were more cards in it, but I left those there because it was just too heavy to take it all with me back home. Um, really nice. Knit tea notes. Uh, Cardiff, October 2018. And on the back side it says, A gift from Eldenwood Craft. She was also a vendor at the retreat. And in here is a dotted grid. Really, really nice. Really love that. And then there's the booklet of the Knit Tea Retreat and in here some really nice information like Friday evening we had a social gathering at the Beverly which was like three doors down from where we stayed in our apartment um, that was really nice and easy so we went there had our dinner lots of knitting lots of chatting Robert came as well because well he has to eat too and he had a lot of fun as well uh, seeing all my friends again and meeting so many new people and 
the, the ones you already met on Ravelry and then in real life and Oh god, it was so amazing and so overwhelming. And then on Saturday morning we started early. So we had two classes, lunch and a social evening. And on Sunday morning I was off. There were there was an option for a third class, but I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. I have to unpack all my yarn. I have to label it because we had vacuum sealed it really really thin as possible. I didn't put labels on it. We took off all the labels at home. I packed new labels and I had to relabel all those skeins. I think it was like 225 skeins. We had like 22 kilos of yarn with us. Um, yeah, It was madness, but we managed. And then at 2 p.m. the marketplace went open. Wow, <laughs> it was kind of overwhelming. Uh, for me, I didn't have a very good day health-wise. Um, yeah, well, lots of women probably watching this and you know the problem. You get your period when you don't have anything. You just get it when it gets there. So I got it on the first day of the retreat. And I'm most of the times really, really sick when I get my period because of my PCOS and endometriosis, probably. We haven't confirmed that and I'm not going in because I now have meds that work like pretty well. But still, I didn't expect it to be five days early. <laughs> that sucked. So I had a migraine on Sunday morning and I was like, yeah, how am I going to power through this? Well, we did with the help of my husband. It was an absolute charm. He did so many things. He was the best helper there was. Uh, he sold my yarn like hot buns and Zoe screamed brace yourselves when opening I have seen the retreat video or vlog video she made uh, because everyone afterwards told me there was a huge line for your yarn and your stall and I was like okay I didn't see that because I was in the corner doing all the calculations for paying euros pounds it was a bit difficult <sighs> and when you only have one price list because you have lost the other two it is a mess I can tell you and Robert was doing card payments I was doing cash payments and sometimes Robert was doing cash payments when I was helping out and wow 45 minutes no rainbows without rain was sold out totally sold out I was like what happened here? Um, at some point I started just crying from overwhelm when someone asked me, how are you doing? I was like, don't ask me. <laughs> just crying. Um, I get the feeling now again, so I can totally cry again now, but I won't. Um, it was just so amazing. Um, I always feel like an amateur and not worth or an imposter or anything. And you guys, it felt so overwhelmingly warm and like, wow, people want to buy my yarn that much and it was amazing. It was truly, truly amazing. The amount of times I heard, here, take my money, <laughs> was like amazing. I can't express how grateful I am. On, uh, yeah. On Sunday evening, I was like completely exhausted. Um, I couldn't even keep my food down. It was like a mess. I was like, no, I'm staying in my pajamas and I'm not coming out of bed today. I don't feel up to it. My friends knew that, they came by anyway. It was really, really nice. Um, I already warned them, I'm in my pajamas. And they were like, that's totally fine. We would if we could, because retreat hangovers are real people. Oh god, how you can miss like that whole buzz of knitters, that whole bubble of just knitters. You can so, so miss it. It was so amazing. I still have a hangover from that. I still want to go back. I still can't believe it's already done. 
I must say it is nice to get back in my usual routine without stress of deadlines and stuff because it's better for my health. Um, one of the reasons I wasn't able to podcast is because I've been pretty, pretty sick. Uh, after Das Bunte Schaf, I couldn't eat anymore. My stomach didn't want any food. I had acid reflux until here and didn't sleep. It was just all the stress. Um, now, a week after the retreat, I'm actually feeling better again. So we can probably conclude it was stress from the past six months with all the health problems in the family and me working too hard seven days a week, 10 hours a day. Even if you like what you're doing, you have to rest. Yeah, I think that message sunk in now. Um, I still have to go in for testing. I went to the hospital last week, so I finally have news on it. Um, I will have a test in two weeks, like the upper endoscopy camera that's going in. Not looking forward to it, but it has to be done because I want to know if something is wrong. I'm guessing not, because I'm already feeling a little bit better after a week back in the Netherlands. And uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. I just have to be a bit more cautious and plan a bit more self-care. And not skip on all those things because I have to work and I want to make my deadline. Jeez. Well, I think th that sums up my weeks uh, since Das Bundeschaf. Um, further, in this nice booklet, there's two patterns. Uh, let me see. There is the Insole Court Cowl by Jenny. Uh, it is... Uh, the Insole Court was the location we were. It was a really, really pretty location. So nice. And also, there is the Retreat Hat by Zoe Carter or Pins and Needles and um, really really like it I'm, I wonder actually if there is enough yarn to make both probably not you will need 100 grams and this one one skein off yeah you will need a skein which is sad I wanted to make both with that yarn then but yeah I'll see probably make a hat because I bought a very nice new purple coat in the UK as well. Since I sold so much yarn, I was able to go shopping on Tuesday. <laughs> it was like so much fun. Um, yeah, I got this nice tunic, a really nice new uh, jeans legging and uh, a wonderful winter coat, which was a bargain. I was like so, so happy. So, let me show you what I got myself at the vendor market. I got this All About Yarn Rainbow Tardis bag. Oh God, I was so happy I snagged it. And I have the one with the rainbow ribbon. Oh, it made me so happy. And I also got a knit tea retreat pin, which I will turn the right way around, of course. Really, really nice. I'm gonna stick it on probably the knit tube treat bag, not on this one. This one is really sturdy, and I think if I poke a hole in it, it won't survive. It will, the hole will be visible. I don't like that. Then I got a wonderful darning mushroom from Sheston Boxes. It's like really really pretty and it's really really nice and shiny I like that so if I ever have to darn my socks I now have a darning mushroom then I'm going to zip open this pouch rings and these rings are in different sizes this is the biggest and I use the middle one And the smallest, I got these from Beaker Button. Um, it is to make Dorset buttons. There was a workshop for it and I knew I couldn't take it because it wasn't Sunday morning. 
I would have loved to, but unfortunately, I couldn't. I'm pretty happy I didn't actually because I would have stressed out even more and probably fainted from the migraine. Um, but yeah, I got those and I'm gonna try making door set buttons myself at home. I got a kit already probably a year ago when I found out I couldn't do that class and I could only do the other two. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna go with a kit and I'm gonna try it myself. That kit is still nicely wrapped somewhere upstairs in my yarn room. But I wanted to have some extra rings because now I didn't have to pay shipping and I can try some different sizes and maybe make a beautiful necklace that I think she's called Emma. I'm not sure. Um, but the owner of Beaker Button uh, had, I was like, oh my God, your necklace is so pretty. And I hope I can make it with those rings. Then another acquisition I got from the market is sock yarn and I'm actually going to leave it in the bag because that's easier to show you and then I will show you the bag West Yorkshire Spinners sock yarn yay I got I think blue raspberry or something Kingfisher I think something tequila sunrise Fairy Lights, the new Christmas one, with the green one, which was not in my head at the moment. And this Sour Apple one, which I really, really love. I already had a ball and I already used quite a lot of it. So I was like, I need a new one if it's possible. And actually this green one, you know, the green one that goes with the fairy lights Christmas colorway I got from the swap table together with this wonderful project bag look at those sheep knitting I love it I really really love it someone just wanted it gone and didn't use it anymore I was like I need sweater project bags so I took this one that ball of green yarn and then there's more. I got this wonderful, I think it's a fat quarter of cute little cat fabric. I was like, oh my God. I saw it and all the other fabric was put together in bundles. Not this one, this one was single. So I was politely asking Jenny, um, can I get a little bit more than just this fat quarter in my first uh, run? So that's when I got the bag. And everyone was like, where did you find that? Well, it was on top of the pile, but everyone was probably so focused on the yarn that they didn't see it and was like, snag, and walked out of there. You can actually see me do that. Or actually, just before I did that, you can see that that uh, project bag is on top of the big pile of stuff in the Knit to Retreat vlog that Zoe made. I really recommend it. I will link in the show notes on YouTube to that video because it is amazing. I cried at the end because it was just so amazing and I really, really miss the retreat. I really, really loved it and I'm probably going to watch that vlog like a million times because it was so cool. I forgot a lot of things for videos, etc. I didn't even have time to do a round on the market with my camera, just because it was so crazy busy. Um, so you have to see it in that retreat vlog instead of here at the end. Um, <laughs> last purchase I want to show you is this cute little notions pouch I also got at Yarn and Yarns. And it has scrolls on it. And the scrolls are a story on itself in Cardiff because on we arrived on Thursday and then it was Friday we went for a walk the weather was glorious like 15 16 degrees Celsius sunny as can be um, it was just amazing like a really nice Indian summer for the whole weekend of the retreat it was amazing I think even even Tuesday was still amazing and after we left then the rain came I think 
it was the same here. I have to be honest. We didn't have glorious weather when we arrived home. It, it started raining on Wednesday, I think. Maybe Thursday. We were soaking wet when we visited my, my gran, so. But, scroll. It's like, ooh, scroll. Um, <laughs> we walked from our apartment to the park, Sophia Gardens. It was like five minutes walk. And then there was a squirrel. And for me, seeing a squirrel reminds me of my dad. Uh, he passed away like 15 years ago. So a squirrel equals my dad saying hello. So this, the cute little squirrel we saw there was like sitting there on a, uh, I think it was a tr tree, trunk or something and just waving its tail. I have no clue why they did that. Our squirrels don't do that. It's a totally different kind of squirrel. We have beautiful slim red ones here, like red brownish. And that one was like gray brownish with a nice thick tail and a bit more uh, American-like, I think. So totally different kind of scroll, um, but it just sat there waving its tail and I made a video of it and you will see it also in the end. I can tell you I cried. I really, really cried seeing that. Tears were streaming on my face while making that video. I was like, okay, this is just a sign that it's good. I almost canceled the Cardiff trip because of my health and I wasn't able to eat anything. All I could eat were dry crackers or saltines. Uh, I can't eat anything with sugar, fat. I can't drink alcohol. I was like, I was really looking forward to eating all the cake that they were uh, going to buy for the knit tea retreat. I didn't make a photo of it, but it looked really, really good. And probably didn't make a photo of it because I didn't want to be reminded of it, <laughs> that I couldn't eat it. Uh, I think it's in a retreat vlog. Otherwise, there will be photos online somewhere. Um, they had carrot cake and really big chocolate, like layered chocolate cakes. Oh, it looked so good. Um, but I couldn't eat that. And I was like, before the retreat, oh my God, will I even have fun if I can't eat anything? Will I even have fun if I can't drink alcohol? Of course I will have fun. I'm not the only one who can't drink alcohol or won't drink alcohol or doesn't drink alcohol. And if I can only eat saltines for a whole weekend, then that is still okay. Then that will be my weekend. I will be there and it will be amazing and it will be nice and it will be great. And I have Robert to help me out at market. And I have friends who can help me out who did, which huge thank you. Um, so yeah, we went and that's probably the biggest lesson I learned. I don't have to be 100% to do stuff. I can do stuff when I'm 80 or 70%. Yeah, I don't want to be very, very sick and be in bed, but I'm not that sick. I can do things. I just am not my usual sparkly, shiny, wow, look at me kind of person, but I'm still worthy. Also, when I'm not 100% sparkly and outgoing and more introvert, I can be, I'm still worthy, I'm still a human, I'm still okay, and yeah, I think that's the biggest lesson I learned from going, and I had an amazing time, and that's, seeing that scroll was like the biggest sign that I had to be there at that moment, and uh, yeah, I had to, I, I did have to cancel some things, but we didn't go on Sunday evening to the social get-together afterwards. But that was fine. I was exhausted anyway. I couldn't have managed it. I couldn't eat anything there because I saw the menu online. Hooray for online menus because I was able to look at lots of things because of that. Um, it was just too fatty for me. And even the very dry stuff I had and, and lean stuff, I couldn't even keep that in. So. It was obvious that that day was just too much. 
So we have to find a way to do some stress management <laughs> for my stomach and my health. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna see how that's gonna work. But all in all, I'm really, really happy that I had so many nice memories and met so many nice people. It was just amazing. So, um, yeah, I think I said it all that I wanted to say of the retreat. Then, of course, back to the notes. What did I miss? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> of course, um, my friend Monique, uh, Frog Peak Creations, has a coupon code specifically for everyone who is watching this podcast. And it is Colorful15, which will give you 15% off of any purchase from her Etsy shop, frogpeakcreations.etsy.com. Let me take a sip because my mouth is so dry. And then I have some shop news. The shop is open again. The shop is fully stocked with lots and lots and lots and lots. Lots of yarn. There are sweater quantities of lots of stuff. Um, no rainbows without rain is sold out, as I told you. I'm going to be dying this week, um, or at least as soon as possible. Uh, I hope today actually going to do the first layers. Um, so I put up No Rainbows Without Rain as a pre-order. So you can order and I will die. Um, I'm going to die a big batch anyways. So as soon as it's dry and finished with a label, it will ship out. So you don't have to wait until I dye it finally and put it in the shop again. Then there will be a shop update very soon, probably this week. Oh, I actually managed to empty the battery. I charge it to full and it's almost empty now. So I will um, <clears throat> go a bit quicker. So to keep it under one and a half hours um, with all the extra material at the end, it's probably going over one and a half hours. Um, yeah, new yarn. I have a few skeins of this left over and this is turning up way bluer than it is in real life. It's a bit more purple. Uh, it's it's neon-y purple-ish. Uh, this is the retreat colorway. Pinkies up, like pinkies up. You saw it knitted in that sock. This is the a mini skein of fluoro pink, which is also in the shop a plenty. Um, I'm not sure when the shop update will be because I'm waiting for stuff. I have some new cocoa knits things that are coming in. And I hope they will come in by the end of the week or earlier. I also have this beautiful skein of Midnight Oil on Colorful Kit Silk. I only have two skeins. They are one of a kind. I can't buy them again because of the way I dyed these. So if you want one or two, get them while they are hot after the shop update. If you want to know when the shop update will be, sign up for my newsletter. It's uh, bit.ly slash colorful creativity. You get a sign up form, etc, etc. Pretty simple. You can also find the link down here. And then I have a new rainbow addition to the shop, which are the Knit Pro Knit Blockers. Uh, Rainbow edition. I really really love them. I had to have them and uh, You know me if I really like it because it's rainbowy. I am going to buy more to sell to you guys um, Handy little box um, What else is coming in? Yeah, new coconuts uh, makers keep in gray and blue and they have some really awesome new stitch markers, which are triangles, which I also had to try out. And then there are um, cute little Adi point protectors for sock uh, DPNs sets. Um, you shove the DPN in the butt of the little bear and you can keep all your needles together, which I thought was really handy as well. So that's coming, but I'm still waiting. I'm also thinking of buying the beautiful new Regia Perfect 
rainbow and neon yarns um, because the opal surprise rainbow uh, is no longer available and also sold out. Yeah, looking at my nails. Oh, another new thing in my shop that's coming. Sock blockers in three sizes, small, medium and large. Uh, I have to see about the packaging because the large version is a bit on the big side. I can't, uh, they will be uh, a, a package, they, they can't go through a, a letterbox or something because they're just too big and they are not flexible and I don't want your local post guy to break them in half and put them in. I know they would if they could. So I have to see about shipping prices on that, but I'll find out and before I put it in the shop. And with that, I guess I will leave you to the little video recap I have of the Nitty Retreat. And I will see you back next time. And hopefully I can keep up with my new schedule of every two weeks again. <laughs> or actually my old schedule and get back into it. I have some acquisitions that I can see out of the corner of my eye over there that I wanted to show you uh, in the next video. So that will be okay. I will have enough to show you still. <sighs> I wish I had eight arms to knit. Actually, maybe four to knit, two projects at a time and two to do cooking and house stuff and two to dye. Or maybe two extra to make beads. At least I would love to be an octopus with more arms. And with that note, I'm going to say goodbye. See you again next time. Bye bye. Tomorrow it's got a little map for all the stalls in there. Um, 
If you can leave your lunch menus, if we don't have them already, if you can leave them on your table, we'll pick them up when we go to your classes. The soup is carrot and parsley. <laughs> <laughs> and it's vegan and gluten free. Um, yeah, we'll drop them over there and then if you head over at uh, one o'clock, um, she'll have all the lunches ready for you to pick up your pay for there. Um, there is loads of cake here. That's it then. Let's go. Bye. Nice to be nice. I finished the ad. Would be nice if they would be working. This is just. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think that's what's happening, but it's just like a little. It bit might be easier. Because yeah. mine were just. Yeah. 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 It just feels like this took me hours to knit. <laughs> it's broken. You're a bit in the shadow because you're behind the. It's fine. <laughs> A vintage warehouse, the children's crafts, bars, and handicrafts. Uh, yeah, just coming to mess with the house. Yeah, I love the